in mourning, let's talk about some more death, shall we? Uh, Rex Hewerman, uh accused Gilgo Beach killer. Uh, as we know, uh, there's a lot of linking going on right now to him and possibly other cases that he may or may have not been involved in. This story that came across yesterday, I saw it initially in The Sun, uh, stood out to me. Uh, it not only identifies who the victim is, but it also identifies and has quotes some individuals who believe Rex Hearman was the last person they saw with their loved one. Yeah. As an eyewitness statement. So it's not just this looks kind of similar. It's oh my God. And it gets deeper than that. The connection's not just that guy certainly looked like Rex Hewerman. It's even deeper. The mysterious disappearance is of a woman in South Carolina. So now here we go. We're talking across state lines. Uh, the others, of course, uh, up uh, in the uh, Gilgo Beach, uh, Long Island area, this South Carolina, where he had property. Uh, and the turn is with the name Julia Ann Bean. She vanished without a trace in 2017, leaving her loved ones desperate for answers. Now new suspicions have emerged surrounding her connection to the accused Gilgo Beach killer, Rex Hewerman. Keep in mind, the murders that we are talking about from Gilgo Beach took place around 2010-ish. And the question has been, well, has he been... Or has the killer not been active for a decade? Happens. BTK did it too. Uh, or do we just not know about what he did between then and now? Julia Ann Bean was last seen alive in late May or early June of 2017 on the Red Bay Road area of Sumter. She was a 36-year-old mother of three who struggled with addiction. When she was reported missing in November 18th of 2017, her absence had already stretched over six worrisome months. The state of her home suggested a sudden or forced departure with essentials like keys, a cell phone, and a wallet left behind. But why is this six-year-old case now getting new attention? Enter Rex Hewerman, obviously recently arrested in connection with the murders of three women found along Gilgo Beach. Hewerman has a grim, cloud surrounding him. The victims, of course, known as the Gilgo Four, were petite women who offered their services on Craigslist. When Bean's friend Heidi Kovas saw news footage of those victims, she was struck by their uncanny resemblance to Julia. As Kovas expressed, all of them matched Julia. Everything, their blonde hair, the green eyes. She was so petite. Kovas' unsettling observation took an even darker turn when she learned that Bean's daughter recognized Hewerman as the last man she saw with her mother. Oh, my God. A chilling encounter outside of a nail salon where Bean's daughter was awaiting on her mom. And here's where it gets even more connective. She saw Hewerman drive Bean in the Chevrolet Avalanche, mm. the very car embroiled in the New York case against him. And if you remember... The avalanches, they picked up in South Carolina on the property that he has there. Yep. So, yeah. The disturbing coincidence don't stop there. Sumter, who, where Bean was last seen, is only 100 miles away from property where Hewerman uh, in Chester County has a property. Uh, could Hewerman have been in the area connecting with Bean during a visit? Being social media activity points to a mid-July disappearance, disappearance, but the days leading up to her sudden exit are foggy. Kovas mentions the possibility of Bean's involvement in sex work, entering, hinting at a Hewerman's potential motive for visiting Sumter. Local law enforcement is now under scrutiny with friends and family of Bean accusing them of failing to investigate her disappearance adequately due to her past issues. Kovas has been reporting her findings to the Sumter County Sheriff's Office which is now investigating the connection. Hewerman's arrest, of course, has sent shockwaves through multiple states. He faces charges for the three Gilgo Beach murders and remains the prime suspect in the fourth. Investigators are now spanning across New York State, New Jersey, and other parts of South Carolina with potential links in Las Vegas being explored as well. His arrest, of course, followed a breakthrough in DNA evidence and a search of his property uncovered a veritable arsenal of suspicious items and activities. Despite the mounting evidence, Hewerman, of course, remains distant and unresponsive, engaging only in religious activities 
during his incarceration. Great. Which maybe he found Jesus. Everything's good now. They should hook him <laughs> up with uh, Lori Daybell. Yeah, exactly. They could start their own little religion together, their own little uh, their own little cult. Question I'd actually been asking uh, quite a few people, and I don't really have a clear answer yet because um, I guess it, it really does verify by jurisdiction by jurisdiction. So I guess I, I should say I do have a clear answer, but it is gray. You have to look in every jurisdiction to answer this question. Uh, Nima Romani uh, helped answer that the other day. Uh, is uh, if you are in prison and you have a priest come to you, is that relationship, is that conversation, if it's especially during uh, confession, if you will, uh, is that like priest, parishioner, confidentiality, like an attorney client privilege, if you will. And in some cases it is, and in some cases it is not. And there is nothing preventing a priest from going and testifying and saying, look, this person told me they did this crime. But of course they could then face repercussions themselves in their own job from their church for violating the privacy and the secrecy of confession. That's a really good question. What did, what did Nima have to say about that? It varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction if they can be compelled to talk or not. Um, in, in many cases, it is they, they don't have to be compelled. It is up to the, the priest if they want to or not, unless it's a child involved. Oh, then they, then they have to report. If there's a child involved, then it has to be reported. It doesn't matter if it's in confession. But somehow that seems to go away when it becomes an adult, which to me makes absolutely no sense. I'm glad it's there for children without a doubt. But to me, to me across the board, because what is the purpose of this? without having that sort of thing reported. Are we going to slow down people reporting that they murdered people to their priests? Oh, well, yeah. so what? If the priest can't do anything, what's the point? Other than, That's a really good question. Other than their forgiveness from the priest because you told them you murdered somebody. Fuck that. Yeah, that's... I'm. Hmm. Then the, that, to me, it's almost like, well, then the church is almost aiding... In yes. making a criminal feel better about themselves, if they go and say this and the church is like, you're forgiven, we're like everywhere else in the planet would be like, you're going to jail, you're getting the death penalty, but this one organization is going to say, you're forgiven, my son. Yeah, it's like this protective bubble that if you're ever talking to a priest, you're protected. You know, depending on where they're talking to, obviously they're going to be speaking somewhere in the prison. Yeah. Um, isn't everything recorded? Not, uh, not like that. Not with a priest and the same with like, um, the attorney client stuff. You don't have to, those moments aren't recorded either. Wow. So I, cause that's what I was wondering. Like, is this, can, could this be an angle? Could this be, can we get a priest in there and get him to talk? If he's going down that route of finding Jesus, can we get some information out of them that way? But again, I mean, the, the thing is, if you do it once, no one's going to talk to a priest again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, absolutely. But that's at, off limits. At, at the same point, it's never really been used much either, to, to my knowledge. I've I, Everybody I've talked to, it's been a lot of people I've asked that question to in the last couple of weeks. If you've been listening on the air, you've heard me ask those questions. Um, and, and it's just, it seems to be kind of one of those up in the air things that there's not a super duper clear answer to, depending on, you know, who the priest is and the jurisdiction that it's taking place in. Oh, that's frightening. So there you go. Uh, interesting way of looking at the uh, the Hiraman case. Uh, interesting to see if this, in fact, is a solid one. To me, I mean, obviously DNA, somewhat on camera, all those things are going to be very damning if they're found. But to have the daughter be able to identify that was Hiraman, that was the Chevy avalanche that they got into, uh, and it is just creepy as shit. And now she's missing. Well, and it's it's not like it's it was a Ford F one fifty. Those are like the most popular trucks. A Chevy Avalanche, especially nowadays, in like the last six years, they're obsolete. You don't yeah. see them very much anymore. So it's a very unique vehicle. He himself is kind of like like Shrek, you know, the ogre. Yeah, very very distinguishable 
characteristics of his body. He's just this huge ogre of a man. Mm -hmm. And everybody describes him that way. You know, he nothing about him blends in his no. car, his body, mm -hmm. his home. None of it. He just he stands out. I'm going to guess we're going to see another connection directly here very soon where it's more confirmed uh, just by the fact of the testimony that uh, that the daughter is giving and uh, and that some friends are giving on this one. This just seems very uh, to me. It feels very solid. I know I'm, I'm just does. sitting here in a studio talking about this, but it uh, it seems like there might be some legs to it. Uh, I, I just I don't even want to I do want to speculate and I don't want to speculate at the same time of. Uh, press the button there. Of uh, how many are we going to find? What is the body count here at the end of the day with Hewerman? I don't think we're going to know. I think we're going to have an idea, and then there's still going to be the question marks out there. Um, how many missing people will end up eventually being linked to him in in the next decade? I don't think we're ever truly going to know the full answer to that. It's will, just disturbing. It will remain an unsolved mystery. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.